question I wanted to get into today that I think describes the first periods of death very well is dismemberment and the fragmenting. So this idea of dismemberment appears throughout different traditions. It's kind of like this, this um, reconstitution, the soul being taken apart or unzipped and then reconstituted. It's also kind of like a transfiguration because the reason why the soul is being challenged in that way is because it's exposed to a, a, a heavenly force that's higher than itself through the death process. And it's also a transformation. And the way that it's symbolized often in different um, traditions is this idea of harvest. So how the death process was symbolized and even like with the, um, the different Egyptian mummies when, there's, when they have their, their, their X, their crossed and they have the hook and the flail it's, it's, it's a reference to, to, to winnowing, to harvesting and sowing. And a lot of the, <laughs> a lot of the agriculture symbology is spiritual symbology. It's not necessarily actually <laughs> about like sowing seeds and agriculture. It's, it's really talking about the spirit, right? It's a metaphor. Um, so the, the idea is separating the wheat from the chaff, which is winnowing, harvest, which is really just alchemy, right? The more spiritual fire that is applied to the human soul as it as it is released, the more the separation occurs, which is pure alchemy, right? Only the resurrection body survives that. Only the immortal body survives these processes, right? And that immortal body is created from a life of right living, of, of nobility, of true nobility in the sense of, of being loving, of being kind, of everything we know to do. That's what creates that body and establishes it in the fires of heaven as we pass through. That passing through all those trials is literally what solidifies and constitutes your resurrection, but that's what creates it, right? That's the fires that forge it, life after life. Regarding agricultural symbolism associated with death, with the death process, is this why so many cultures associated the goddess Venus with grain, a hint at death and resurrection relating to the development of Venus body? Exactly, exactly, exactly. You got it, Leonine Venus. So it's always interesting to go back and read the different, you know, scholarly <laughs> approaches to reading funerary texts, reading occult, doc, occult books, these old 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 year old texts that are all speaking in metaphor and symbology. And they're like, oh my God, you know, gosh, the Egyptians, they love to talk about crops. Oh my God, the Mayans were so into agriculture. It's like, well, they're actually speaking a metaphorical language of symbols um, because that's how their consciousness works. That's how our consciousness works. That's why, you know, how many people love to just watch shows before, before they go to bed? How many people love stories? How much of our life is dedicated to story? How many times have we had cathartic experiences through story, right? So we operate as, you know, a huge portion of our own conscious mind, subconscious mind operates through symbolism. And there was a period, the earlier back we go, that's pretty much the only way it worked. We didn't have this literal, like if you go back thousands and thousands of years, humanity didn't actually have the organs, the cognitive organs to objectively perceive the spiritual world. Everything was through an inner experience and also everything was through symbols. Only recently has humanity been able to objectively understand the spiritual world, which is what has driven the, you know, natural science as well, right? Is that to objectively understand. So, so many spiritual processes are disguised, for example, in agricultural symbolism, like the hook and the flail. We really think that the that that Osiris and the Pharaoh is talking about planting seeds, that he's talking about farming. So that's the danger of materialism is taking it liter taking these things literally. Also in the 
you'll find in the Mayan culture or in South America, it's corn. So people are like, oh my God, gosh, did the Mayans ever love maize? They loved corn. It's like the idea of corn is the same idea of the harvest. It's the resurrection body. It's the golden sun resurrection body. That's corn. The golden wheat, that's the resurrection body. That is what gets separated from the husk. The husk is the dross of material life that gets pulled away. And eventually, life after life, as you begin to spiritually grow and develop your resurrection body or your Venus body, right, you have less and less of that husk. So when the harvest, when, when the harvest happens, which is death, the corn is pulled from the husk or the wheat is pulled from the chaff. And that rises whole and intact into the heavenly planes. This, this is why people use it. They're not obsessed with plants and agriculture, although I'm sure it was very important to them. You know, this is, this is a um, metaphor for passing through the gates of death, having your dross pulled away and being left in a, in a kind of elemental mal amalgamate dross. And you passing further and further with whatever kernel of a resurrection body you've built, you pass with that as far as you can in the, in the process of winnowing or the process of, of, of separating the wheat from the chaff. That's the harvest. It's all about resurrection. Whether it be a kernel of corn or a kernel of wheat, that's the resurrection body.